Hello, the Hong Kong government has given further details of the second tranche of the employment support scheme and how that's actually going to work. So let's go through some of those details. The eligibility itself is unchanged. However, please note that if you apply for it as a self-employed person in the first tranche, you can't claim again. The duration is a three-month period as it was last time and this is for September, October and November 2020. The amount itself is unchanged, but there are some improvements for employees over 65. Essentially, if those uh, employees are listed on the MPF with voluntary contributions made by them by their employers, then the amount of wage subsidy will be calculated based on the number of those employees engaged in the specified month with a subsidy of 5,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars per employee. If the amount of wage subsidy for any of the employees aged 65 or above is calculated based on 50% of the actual wages or 10 times the voluntary, uh, and that's below 5,000 per month, the employer may still receive a wage subsidy of 5,000 uh, for each of them, such employees per month. Um, this can be a little bit complicated. So if you do have employees over 65, which is relatively rare, then please do get in touch. The undertakings itself are unchanged. So it's all about um, making sure you maintain the number of paid employees. Uh, and that's excluding those on no paid leave in September, October, November 2020. Uh, essentially, they shouldn't be less than the total number of paid and unpaid in March 2020. So please note that we're still using the March MPF date uh, as the key. This is how many staff you have. And uh, you've also got to use all of the subsidy on paying wages to the employees. So you can't be using this money for other things or diverting it. It's got to go to the employees. Two notable uh, changes are that major property management companies and the two major supermarket chains are meant to be either giving back some of this money to the uh, owners committee or uh, giving vouchers and discounts, etc. We'll see how that really comes into play, but that won't affect uh, your specific company itself. The penalties are unchanged, um, except for we have um, the possibility that essentially if you applied for the first tranche and you made significant redundancies and you failed to kind of prove an intention to, to rehire, then your second tranche may actually be rejected. Um, equally, if within the second tranche you have significant redundancies, there may be a full clawback of the subsidy itself. Um, the actual wording around this is is a little bit vague, um, so more will come out when the scheme is actually launched. But broadly, um, if we think about this on a kind of a, a fair use basis, if you continue to employ the same number of staff, then you'll have no problems. If you have to make one or two redundancies and can't rehire them and you have a reason to rehire them, then whilst you may be paying the nominal penalties that have been previously documented, um, it's unlikely that they're going to claw back in full. There are going to be some new terms and conditions. Um, these haven't been seen yet, but there's a thought that essentially it goes to say that uh, this subsidy has to be used for uh, the benefit of the staff and the objective of this scheme itself. Um, if it's not, then you know we come into penalties and, uh, and and other such legal matters. The timing: the scheme will be open from 7 a.m. on the 31st of August, um, and it will close um, on the 13th of September 2020. Payment is likely to be three to four weeks afterwards. Um, please note that the payments will be made um, on the basis of a net with any penalties from the first tranche being taken out of that second tranche. From our experience of the first tranche, the website was very busy on the first couple of days, um, but people could log in and they could actually um, submit all their forms, etc. cetera. Um, and payment was, yeah, probably four to five weeks was the average that we saw. Um, as before, please make sure you have everything that you need to do the application, namely the MPF certificates, your bank details, um, and your proof of that bank account with a kind of a PDF statement or similar. One thing that uh, did catch some of our clients out on the first tranche was the bank account has to be in the same name as the business. So if you're a entrepreneur and you're using your personal bank account, um, that won't work for this subsidy at all. A few important clarifications. Um, 
the MPF scheme still has to have been set up as at 31st of March 2020, um, and it has to have been paid up by that point as well. It is noted that um, the, the ESS actually sent an email out this weekend, and it spoke about how important it is to submit the MPF on time, but with the COVID situation, whilst it's a legal requirement to do that under the MPF ordinance, they have noted that as long as the June and July MPF is settled on or before the 31st of August 2020, they will consider that as compliant with the ESS. So whilst we don't recommend clients try and save cash flow by doing that, that is a, a little bit of cushion from the government. If you do miss MPF, then it's assumed that the staff aren't paid um, and there'll be penalties and clawback, etc. So it's very important to pay the staff and to pay the MPF. Uh, repeating what I said before, if you're self-employed with an MPF account, only one subsidy is allowed. So if you claimed under the first tranche, you can't claim again. And then finally, the website will be live 31st of August to the 13th of September. As always, any questions, please let me know.